talk about the convex hull algorithm. To talk about convex hulls, we first have to define a convex polygon. You might remember from high school that a convex polygon is a polygon with all interior angles less than 180 degrees. This definition is equivalent to the following. Given any two points in the polygon, the line segment between them stays inside that polygon. You can see that the figure on the left is convex because for any two points the segment will stay inside, while the figure on the right is not convex. We call this concave as we do have a segment that falls outside the polygon. So now a convex hull will be the smallest convex polygon containing a given set of points. This can be generalized to three, four, etc. dimensions. Now, a convex hull algorithm is given a set of endpoints, find their convex hull. There are many examples of convex hull algorithms. The gift wrapping algorithm, which is also called the Jarvis March in two dimensions, quick hull or Q hull, which is optimized for two to eight dimensions, divide and conquer monotone chain, incremental convex hull algorithm, Chan's algorithm, and what we'll be talking about later, gram scan. So finding the convex hull is important because it's used in both geometry, computational geometry, planning paths for robots, computer graphics for lighting, shadows, and faces, as well as farthest pair statistics. So, one example we mentioned was GIF wrapping. For GIF wrapping, we start with the leftmost point, which has to be in the convex hull. You can visualize how this algorithm works by considering the points as nails and the hull as a string. We tie the string to the leftmost point and then rotate it counterclockwise until hitting the first nail. That nail will become part of the convex hull. We continue doing this until we reach the leftmost point, our starting point. This will leave us with the complete convex hull. The time complexity of this algorithm is O of M times N, where M is the number of hull points and N is the number of points. This is because for each of the M hull points, we go through the N points to find the next hull point. In the worst case, this will be O of N squared, which will be if all the points are in the hull. The space complexity will be O of N, as we will not need to store more than a constant amount times the number of points. The advantages and disadvantages of this algorithm are that it's simple and can be in implemented in three dimensions. However, its time complexity is not optimal, as in the worst case we get O of n squared. So now we're going to talk about the gram scan. This is the most prevalent version of convex hull algorithms, so it is important to understand. I'll walk through it step by step to make sure it makes sense for everyone. To set up your algorithm, you're going to want to select an anchor point, which is referred to here as P sub zero. Traditionally, the point with the lowest Y coordinate is used for this, with the leftmost being used in the event of a tie. In the example we're going to show, the leftmost point is used. Any point that is the most in any direction will work as your anchor point. You'll want to sort each point, or vertex, by its polar angle relative to P sub zero. This will be explained on the next slide. Then, start off by pushing the first three vertices onto your stack. More pushing will be done as more vertices are encountered. The only time we'll pop is when a vertex is determined to be not included in the hole. Here, the leftmost point has been selected as the anchor point. The numbers indicate the order of polar angles from smallest to largest. Since we picked the leftmost point to start, the axis for determining the polar angles of all the vertices in our example is a vertical line passing through the leftmost point. You'll see one has the smallest angle to this axis. For the rest of the points, you'll do a counterclockwise scan to get the order of the angles. That is where the scan and gram scan comes from. The line from vertices 0 to 1, highlighted in orange, is the first line to be added to our hull. So then we go in the order our scan found the points, add a line, and test to see if that is a part of our hull. Our next point is 2, so we make a line from 1 to 2. To determine if this line is in the hull, we will think of our hull so far as a road that we're driving on. Coming from 0 and bound for 2, we made a left turn at 1 to get to 2. 
Seeing this, as far as we know, the line from 1 to 2 is in the hull. Left turns will be signified by the green plus sign. Let's continue. Our next point is 3, and we made a left turn at 2 coming from 1 to get to 3. As far as we know, this is in the hull. Our stack right now contains 0, 1, 2, and 3, since we push as we encounter. Our next point is a 4, and we made a left turn at 3 coming from 2. As far as we know, this is in the hull. Our stack contains 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Our next point is 5, and we made a right turn at 4 coming from 3. This is indicated by a red minus sign. This tells us that we now need to backtrack in order to determine which points are not in our hull, and that we must have now, and what we have now is incorrect. We pop 4 from the stack. It is not a part of our hull. We analyze the road from 3 to 5. We see that we made a right turn at 3, going to 5 from 2. So then we know that 3 is not in the hole. Let's pop 3. 2 is at the top of our stack, so we analyze the road from 2 to 5. We see that we made a left turn at 2 to 5, coming from 1. So now we can actually continue and are finished with our backtracking. 5 gets added to the stack now, and our stack contains 0, 1, 2, and 5. Next point is 6. A left turn is made at 5, coming from 3, so we continue. The stack contains 0, 1, 2, 5, and 6. Next point is 7. A left turn is made at 6, coming from 5, so we continue. The stack contains 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, and 7. The next point is 8. A right turn is made at 7, coming from 6, so we need to backtrack. 7 is popped from the stack, so we examine the road from 6 to 8. We see a right turn, so we need to backtrack more. We examine 5 to 8. We see a left turn, so we can stop backtracking and add 8 to the stack. It contains 0, 1, 2, 5, and 8. The next point is 9. We see a left turn, so 9 is added to the stack. It contains 0, 1, 2, 5, 8, and 9. No more points are remaining from the initial counterclockwise scan, so that means we are done and have found our convex hull for this set of points. All of the points with red X's are the ones in the set that are not included in the hull. Now we have our hull, with vertices 3, 4, 6, and 7 not included in the hull. To find Graham scan's time complexity, we break it down to the sorting aspect and the scanning aspect. We know sorting takes n log n if we use merge sort, and then the scanning takes O of n. This is because each point is considered at most twice. When we're making a left turn on the road, it is considered only once as the algorithm advances to the next point right away by pushing it on the stack. If we make a right turn, the point is removed from the stack, so the point is manipulated at most twice as we pushed it on the stack during the left turn process, and now we're popping it off the stack. Even in the worst case, the algorithm has, is such that the algorithm has to backtrack through all endpoints. It is done manipulating those points after that backtrack so it cannot be worse than O of n. Therefore, the overall time complexity is O of n log n as the sorting process dominates the time to compute the whole. The space complexity for gram scan is O of n because we just have to store the points by x, y coordinates, and then we have to maintain the stack for the scanning process. Some advantages and disadvantages of gram scan are that it's the best two-dimensional worst case convex hull algorithm it's very simple to understand as it relies on sorting as well as implement. Its main disadvantage is that it does not work for more than two dimensions. Finding a convex hull has a n log n lower bound. Um, we can prove this by contradiction. We can assume that there's an algorithm that has a smaller lower bound. And then given a set of numbers, we would plot the points on a parabola and the algorithm would find these points in a counterclockwise manner from the leftmost point. This would sort, sort the points with a lower smaller bound than n log n, violating the lower bound of sorting. 